On this episode of What's Going On With Shipping, a Viking is loose on the Mississippi. I'm your host, Sal McCoglano. Welcome to this episode of What's Going On With Shipping. If you're new to the channel, take a moment, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell, so you'll be alerted about new videos as they come out. Well, a Viking loose on the Mississippi. I think we should investigate this. Now, I'm not talking about the Kensington Runestone or the options for Vikings to have sailed down the St. Lawrence Seaway into the Great Lakes and then portaged over to the Mississippi River. No, that, that's not what we're talking about. Instead, we're talking about a Viking ship. Yes, a Viking ship that is loose on the Mississippi. So this is the brand new Viking Mississippi launched down at Edison Showest in Louisiana. It is the newest cruise ship operating on the Mississippi River by Viking Cruises. Now, this is a amazing little craft, very similar to what you see sailing on the waters around in Europe. Uh, it houses 386 guests in 193 different staterooms, state-of-the-art Viking longship. Now, they use that term longship to describe their type of river cruises. And, and this isn't quite like the Viking longships you would see on the Danube or the Rhine. This vessel is built specifically for the Mississippi River. And that means it's not quite as narrow and long and squat as you see on, for example, the Danube, where you have to get under a lot of very low bridges on the Danube River. But the ship is built to a kind of a Scandinavian design for it. Uh, 450 feet long, 75 foot wide, uh, very low draft for this vessel, uh, multiple screws on the back for propulsion, five decks, uh, including a pool on the upper deck stern that you can see up there, one of those infinity pools with the glass that you can swim in, very different than what you've seen on other river boats operating along the Mississippi. The uh, staterooms all feature balconies, uh, very novel design that we see coming here from Viking. Now, this ship has caused a little bit of controversy in not only her construction, her unique uh, capabilities, but also have to do with the ship's ownership. This is the Viking River Cruises site, and you'll see on here the plans for the vessel. It follows a very standard kind of riverboat plan on the main deck, on the, on, on the first deck. You have the restaurant, uh, uh, basically uh, uh, common area spaces, lounge areas to be. And then as you go up on the vessel, you'll see a series of decks here that cover uh, everything. Uh, up on the top deck, you have the large kind of uh, uh, massive staterooms that you can rent uh, with huge views over the bow right above the bridge. Uh, and then back aft, you'll have the cafe the terrace, and then very unique here for an American riverboat is that sun terrace with the pool on it, and then decks and decks of cabin spaces with the restaurant on the lower deck. Very common. Now, the controversy has to do with the ownership of this vessel and the fact that Viking is a foreign company headquartered in Switzerland. And can a Swiss-based company operate a vessel in the inland waters of the United States. There's an issue with the Jones Act, the Merchant Marine Act of 1920, along with the Passenger Service uh, Vessel Act of 1886. And this story from Workboat deals specifically with the issue. The Maritime Administration affirmed its opinion that the Switzerland-based Viking can sail the U.S. in a bona fide charter. The way they're doing this is Viking had Edison Showest build the vessel. Uh, they built it down in their Louisiana yard. And what they're doing is, uh, the way they ar argued this is that Edison West would time charter a cruise vessel that it would construct, own and operate to Viking, a non-citizen. So technically Edison West is the owner of the vessel. They construct it, they own it, they operate it for Viking cruises. Uh, and the initial term here is for eight years with an option extending to 30 years 
total. And Marad put this out in an official document that uh, you can read uh, if you want to. I'll include it in the show notes. It's boring legal. But basically, this sets out the rule by which Viking can operate their vessel. So Viking has started its cruises. You'll see right here, this is Cruise Mapper, and you'll see the itinerary right now for the vessel operating between St. Louis, Hannibal, Missouri, Burlington, Davenport, Iowa. So it's operating on the upper Mississippi, just north of St. Louis. And obviously, there's some key restrictions in operating on the Mississippi. One is the draft of the vessel. Now the ship's built to a very low draft design, so it should be able to operate on the upper Mississippi without a problem. The other big concern is air draft, the distance from the water line to the top of the vessel to get under bridges. And that fluctuates depending on the height of the Mississippi River. And this is going to be a very seasonality thing where this ship can operate. Being five decks, it's a pretty tall vessel compared to some of the other vessels that are out there. And if you look here on Cruise Mapper at vessels operating, their big competition is going to be from American Cruise Lines, the cruise line that has been operating almost exclusively in the coastal waters of the U.S. and on the Mississippi with ships like the American Splendor, the American Jazz, uh, you'll see right here, American Heritage. Uh, the first and third one of those are these kind of uh, old paddle wheel kind of design vessels here that you see. Uh, but then newer vessels like the American Symphony and the American Melody all operating uh, in this way. And American Cruise Lines, who I look be full disclosure here, I've worked for American Cruise Lines in the past. I've been a guest lecturer. I go on board for a cruise in the summertime, typically in the New England cruise or the Chesapeake Bay cruise on board for seven to 10 days. And I give guest lecturers. So that's my scope of my involvement, but you should know. Uh, they operate vessels along the Mississippi on a variety of different routes, uh, all the way from the upper to the lower to really long cruises all up and down. And their fleet of vessels are much smaller than what you see with the Viking Mississippi. For example, their American Riverboat can handle about 180 guests. Again, you come back here, you're talking about 386 on board the Viking Mississippi. They also have these uh, coastal cats. These are cruise ships along the coastal region. They have coastal boats like the Constellation. I've worked on those. They have the paddle wheel design. And again, one of the things you see here, the paddle wheel design, very similar to the uh, Viking Mississippi, about five decks right there. Their stacks are lowable so they can get under, under the bridges there. They operate with about 180 guests. And those vessels are really the main ones that will be competing against Viking. The entrance of Viking into the inland waterways is an interesting event because, again, here is a non-U.S. company that is overseeing it. Now, again, we, we've seen this happen before. We this, this Maersk Lines, for example, operates a fleet of vessels for the U.S. government, uh, and they do it through a American corporation uh, that is Maersk Lines Limited, which is based in the United States. Viking is doing it through Edison Shawest, a U.S. company that manages the vessel under the banner of Viking Cruises. Now, will this vessel be comparable to Viking Cruises over in Europe? I don't know. I don't go on cruises too much uh, to do it. That's a whole different element. What I'm talking about here is the organization and structure of the vessel to be able to operate on the Mississippi as a Swiss owned company going through a US based company. But Viking Mississippi was built in a US yard. It was built in the United States by American citizens in a US yard. It meets the Jones Act requirements for everything is going to employ American mariners and American crew members on board. Uh, these coastal voyage trips uh, along the coast and up the rivers tend to be more expensive than what you get on the big cruise lines, which can hire foreigners to work, non-Americans to work on there. I shouldn't say foreigners, non-Americans, I apologize for them. Uh, they can pay them different wage scales because they're not paying Americans for that. But I should also note that during the height of COVID, whereas international cruises were shutting down, a lot of these coastal cruises still were able to maintain themselves, especially as we were coming out of COVID and to do it, they didn't have the issue with having to fly overseas, clear customs, and a lot of pandemic breakouts on board the vessels. Smaller vessels, 
are appealing to many people because of the service being more focused and 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 uh, coordinated through just a fewer people. So interesting development. I thought it was worth to bring up the mention that there are Vikings loose on the Mississippi. Hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, take a moment, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so you'll be alerted about new videos as they come out. Leave a comment, share it across social media, give it a thumbs up, and if you can, support the page. You can do that one of by two ways. One, you hit the super thanks button below, contribute directly to the page, or head on over to Patreon, become a patron of the page. You can support the page directly by either monthly or yearly uh, payments. I appreciate any support I get. The channel has experienced a phenomenal amount of growth just recently. We're getting close to 55,000 subscribers. Just an amazing, amazing uh, amount of support has been doled out for the channel recently. Until our next video, Sal, signing off.